For this next demonstration, I again, I didn't have any images that would work for this in the stock images, so I did search.creativecommons.org and I found this uh, city street to kind of Im mimic the image that was in the slideshow, and I found this image of storm clouds. And so I want to change this image from being kind of a bright summer day, and I want to change the background and I want to replace the clouds. And so if I take the cloud image, if I do Command A um, to select all or Control A, Command C or Control C to copy, and then Control or Command V to paste, you'll see that the two images are not proportionally sized. One is much bigger than the other. And so what you should do before you get started with this image is you should not just copy and paste it. You shouldn't say, well, it works, it's fine. What you should do is you should choose uh, image and mode, see what the color mode is, it's RGB, and then image size, and you need to compare apples to apples, right? So you need to decide, well, what will my finished document size be? And so maybe I'm going to print this on an inkjet photo printer, and I know that it needs at least 240 resolution. And so you can change the resolution to 240, do not resample, and you can see that at 240 this image could print at 8 inches by 6 inches. And just note that and say, okay, that's good to know. Then in, let's get rid of that layer that I copy and pasted. In this image, you do the same thing. Image mode, it's also RGB, so those are compatible. And then image and image size. Change the resolution to 240. And this one can print 10 inches, 10.8 inches wide and 16.2 inches tall. Great. So now I know that I have two images. They're both 240 resolution. One is significantly larger than the other. But if I'm trying to make, let's say, a 3 by 5 inch postcard or something like that, I would have plenty of size or pixels for, for the needs. Even though one picture is way bigger than the other, they're both still okay for that size. And so instead of moving one image into the other file, why don't we create a new document altogether and make that the right size so I'm going to print it. I'm going to change the size to be, let's say, Let's do 3 by 5 that's small. 3 by 5 the resolution is going to be 240, and then hit Create. And so now I have this document, which is the right size. And so now when I select all, and I copy, and I paste my document, it'll be big, right? I can zoom out, choose Edit, Free Transform. The picture is much bigger than I need, but I could resize it. And then I have more clouds than I need, so I can move them if I need to. Like these this part of the cloud might look like more like a storm, but maybe I'll nudge it eventually so those parts of the clouds are present. And so we'll do the same thing. Command or Control A to select all, Command or Control C to copy, and then Command or Control V as in Victor to paste. Again, it's too big, so we'll choose Edit and Free Transform. Just zoom out a little bit because this one's really big. And then you can scale that one down. And now we could nudge that picture into place where we want it to be. Once you have that, then you can go about combining the images. In this case, I think this is best for a layer mask. And so we'll review layer masks a little bit. So layer masks are attachments onto your layer that allow some of the layer to be hidden and some of it to be visible. And so if I create a hole in the background here where the sky is, it would allow the layer beneath it, the clouds, to show through. And so we can create a layer mask on the layers panel at the bottom by selecting the Create Layer Mask icon. And then in this case, uh, I'm going to use a paintbrush and black. And as I paint on the layer mask with black, you'll start to see the clouds through. And what you might want to do for this example is to paint, and to paint with a soft edge, so there's zero hardness to my brush. And opacity, maybe I'll make it lower, so that every time I paint, I'm not going completely through. See how I painted through the building? You can still see part of the building. And so then you can add the clouds in as you need them. You'll want to pay more attention when you get closer to the buildings. But in this case, if I just kind of go close to them, maybe it'll just look like it's a stormy day. You'll want to make your brush smaller. You can use the right and left bracket key to make the brush smaller. Or you can come all the way up to the top of your screen here and you could lower the size of your brush. I like to do it with the bracket keys though because you can kind of visually see if it's big enough or small enough. And you can come through and you can slowly paint in 
the clouds. The more you paint, the more opaque they'll be. Go through the edge of the building. You probably want to zoom in on it. I'm just going to do it real quick so that you can see what it looks like. Go around the edges. When you're painting, which we haven't covered yet, but we actually cover as our next lecture topic, um, it's good to have a stylus because the stylus kind of works like the paintbrush in your hand. If you're using a mouse like I currently am, it's a little harder to kind of paint in the, the examples. Let's just zoom in a second on the bottom part. And you can... I think I'm just going to paint over those trees that are in the bottom, down here like that. So now it kind of looks like they're in the background because my paintbrush is opaque. Okay. And then once you're done, you can go back over it. You can add more, put different brush strokes in until you get the look that you're looking for for the storm clouds in your document. Uh, what's important about this demo isn't the, the craftsmanship or the attention that I put to painting in those clouds. You can come back. I think that maybe it doesn't look as great with the opacity. You can come back and, and really get the the clouds to come in better than that. And one benefit of this is that if you grab layer one, you can nudge the clouds back and forth until you get the amount of clouds or not as many clouds as what you're looking for. But the point that I'm trying to make in this demo is that if you're combining two images, this image looks really big on the screen and this image looks smaller. But when I copied the clouds, Command or Control C, and I pasted them, into the document with the cityscape, you visually can now see that they, they weren't comparing apples to apples. They weren't the same size. And you should always understand what you have before you start editing with it.